Hi guys, my name is Meg and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to teach you how to make your own fermented sauerkraut. And eating sauerkraut is just like taking probiotics, but ones that you can actually make yourself, which is awesome. There are already live and active cultures all over the cabbage leaves just from coming out of the soil. And that is what is going to proliferate throughout this ferment and create those amazing probiotics. Fermented vegetables are so essential to your diet. It's so healing to your gut. A good gut health is really important to your just overall health. An unhealthy gut can contribute to so many random health problems that you would have no idea were even from that. But it's just really important to take a lot of good healthy probiotics and eat a lot of fermented vegetables and fermented dairy products. So this is one of our favorite fermented foods that we can make at home ourselves. We can go through like a gallon of this a week if, <laughs> if we're able to. So I make a whole gallon at a time and you can see this is our last, last batch that's almost gone. So it's time to make the next one before we run out. I waited a little bit too long and we probably will run out <laughs> before the next batch is completely done fermenting, but sometimes that happens. So let's get right into the recipe. So it takes about four or five smallish cabbages to fill up one of these glass gallon jars or about three medium ones. They really squish down a lot. If you cut up all the cabbage and you have it in your bowl, you're gonna be like, there is no way that's gonna fit in there, but it really does condense down a lot. It's crazy. But first you are going to just make sure your cabbages are washed off and you're gonna take off a few of the outer leaves and we're gonna save these for using later. So don't cut these up with the rest of your cabbage. And then you're gonna cut out the cores that are just, there's, you can leave part of the core in there, but I find that it's just not as enjoyable to eat. They're pretty crunchy and tough. So I like to cut out the cores. And then you just cut up the whole cabbage into small pieces. You can do as small or however you prefer eating sauerkraut. It's not too important. put it all into a large bowl. I'm actually going to be using my huge stock pot just because I'm making such a big batch at a time that I find it's just easier to have something that's really, really big. Otherwise, stuff like kind of goes over the edge and it kind of makes a mess. And so I really like using my big stock pot. That one seems to work the best for us. And then we're going to sprinkle it with salt. And so you want to use about one tablespoon for every one and three quarters of a pound of cabbage. So normally I'll just weigh a couple of the cabbages beforehand and kind of get a rough estimate of how much the cabbages weigh all together and then I'll figure out how much salt I need from there. But I'll make sure to write down all the ratios and measurements and stuff that you need in the description so that you can remember but it is one tablespoon for one and three quarters of a pound of cabbage. And you can just use any sea salt. I'm using pink Himalayan salt today just because it's one of our favorite salts to use. It's just so high in healthy minerals. Just be sure not to use iodized table salt. Then once your salt is sprinkled on there, you're just going to massage it in. And one thing I like to do is once you have combined all the salts into the cabbage well, then just let it sit and the salt's actually going to pull out a lot of the moisture so it saves you some work. If you just want to get it done, you can just massage all the cabbage right away and just you're gonna just like smash it and I like to squeeze it in my, in my hands. <laughs> just like get it all smashed up and you're trying to get li the liquid out of the cabbage leaves and salt really helps with that. So if you can let the salt sit on there, it's gonna help pull it out help a little bit with work but and my sweet husband is helping me today with this part because I am actually in my third trimester of pregnancy and when I'm pregnant my muscles cramp up so easily and my hands just get like so so cramped up when I do this so Luke is helping me today which is super sweet of him and then once you've massaged enough and you have quite a bit of liquid in the bottom of your bowl or pot then we're all done with that part. You wanna make sure that you have enough liquid that when we pack it into our jar, that it's going to cover the cabbage. So then you're just gonna take a jar. I normally just use one big gallon jar, but I think the half gallon mason jars are a little easier to find and come by. So you can just use two of those, just use whatever you want. But I pack all the cabbage into there and pour the rest of the liquid on top. And then I will use my fist to pack the cabbage down. And you wanna make sure that 
Again, the cabbage is below the liquid so that it's not coming into contact with any air because that'll make it just mold and go bad and not ferment properly. And then I take those outer leaves that we took off the outside of the cabbage earlier and I'm gonna layer them on top of all the sauerkraut and that's gonna just help make sure that none, none of the air is gonna get down past the liquid and then past all those leaves to get to our ferment. So it's just an extra layer of protection and I find that works really, really well. And then you want to use some sort of a weight to just hold everything down. And typically what I use is just two Ziplocs. You wanna make sure it's double bagged so it doesn't leak. That would be a bummer to have water leak into your ferment. And so then I just put the Ziploc bags down inside there and fill it up with water as much as it needs and then seal them up and I just set the lid to the jar on top. You don't want to seal it because you do want air to, to be able to get in if it needs and also the ferment is going to expand a little bit and you don't want your jar to blow up or break or anything. So I do just set the lid on there so, so nothing falls in there but it can still get air. You can also use rocks in your Ziploc bag, just something to hold it down. They do make fancy ferment, fermentation weights but I find that this works perfectly fine so I've never you know, felt the need to buy those things. And then I typically will set it in something else. I'll set it in a baking dish because when it expands, sometimes the, some of the liquid will come out of the top and I don't want to making a huge mess on my counter. So I'll set it in something else and just set it on the counter somewhere. And then it just needs to sit for about a week. After a week, you can take all the stuff off and try it first. And if it's not quite as fermented or spicy as you want it, just put all the stuff back in and leave it for a couple more days. You can really get this as mild or as spicy as you want it to. You can really customize it. But typically a week is about perfect for the kind of sauerkraut that we really enjoy. You can see that on my last batch, the leaves do like kind of fade a little bit. They get just a like slight, slight tinge of brownness. You, you can kind of tell when it's fermented properly and it's just gonna smell like sauerkraut if you know what that smells like. So then once it's all done fermenting, you just take all the stuff out and just put the lid on the jar and put it in the refrigerator. Once it's done fermenting, you wanna make sure you store it in the refrigerator so it doesn't ferment any further and go bad. And just enjoy your sauerkraut. And this is one of my favorite, favorite snacks. And probably because it reminds me of pickles and I love pickles. And even my daughter, who's one year old, loves this stuff. She is obsessed with sauerkraut, which I love because it's so healthy for her. But hopefully you guys enjoyed this recipe and it was helpful. If you guys make some of this, let me know in the comments how it turns out. I'm just really interested to hear how your guys' fermentation journeys are going. I just absolutely love fermenting foods and drinks and it's so much fun. So thank you for watching this video and I will see you in my next one. Bye!